What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today back on Giants franchise for week number four. But we got a bye week. We got a really odd schedule this time around. So we will be doing a little bit of simulating um, this week. If you see our schedule of the games we've played thus far, we play the Eagles, Cowboys, Redskins in week one, two, and three, right? And then we have the Cowboys, Redskins, Eagles in week five, six, and seven. Very unrealistic schedule uh, coordinating here. But it is what it is. We're not going to be playing the Cowboys or the Redskins in week five or six. Uh, and I guess the Eagles is kind of a boring one. So we're probably going to be taking back up around week eight, which is a little weird. All right, so we're going to start by upgrading some players here at the bye week. Jalen Mills being one of them. He hasn't really looked good, I'll say, which has been disappointing. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade his zone coverage. Boost him up to an 86 overall. And the Green Goblin, I mean, dye your hair blue or something. He gets a slight boost to his own coverage. Alex Espinosa is a big one I'm excited about. I think we're going to get into uh, Field General here. As that just impacts the most. We could go Run Stopper because it fits the scheme, but he's still going to have the scheme fit anyway. So Field General gets boosted. As you can see, uh, not huge gains, but overall decent enough. Boost him up to an 83. Julius Manning, the rookie out of Texas. Wearing number 29 is going to go up to an 80 overall as he gets hopefully huge boost to zone. Only a plus two, but that still goes up to a 74, so that's pretty big. Better than nothing. Taking a look at some wideouts, you can never really have enough of those, but if any team does, we do. We talked about Davian Keel a little bit in uh, one of these episodes, how he is a uh, something or other track star. I'm not really sure. But uh, other than that, we don't really have a ton of scouting points. So we're going to simulate... Kind of a lot. I mean, we're not going to play until week eight. Kyle Laletta actually has an upgrade point. And we go to his stats. Kyle Laletta really isn't that bad. It's just his awareness is low, which brings down his entire overall. If we're going to go into Field General here, that boosts him up to a 76. Uh, and that's even throw power up one to a 93. That's not bad. Defensively, Alex Espinosa with another point. We'll go into run stopper this time, boosting him up to an 84. And we see a lot of boost this time. Block shed plus two. Hit power even goes up. Tackling, I like to see. If hit power can go up into the 90s at some point, that would be ideal. That superstar dev is so key. Are right, we going to be simulating here versus the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see if we manage to pick up that win. We don't. We're going to slip to 2-2 two and two as the Cowboys beat us 38-27. Go ahead and check out the box on that one. See what happened. As that's unfortunate for us. Seems like we came out and just got outscored in the fourth quarter, and that really hurt us. Both quarterbacks played pretty good games. Three touchdowns, no interceptions for both sides. A little bit frustrating. Uh, both running backs played all right. Saquon didn't get a whole ton of touches, only 12. As far as touchdowns go, Odell still without touchdown. Howard Russell with one, Evan Ingram with one. Saquon Barkley with the receiving touchdown. Only two sacks allowed in the entire game. Alex Espinosa had 13 tackles, including a tackle for loss. Two from Jalen Mills, two from B.J. Hill who got in the game. Sacks for Jalen Smith, Roman Pugh, B.J. Goodson got a sack. Demarcus Lawrence and David Irving combined for one. Interceptions for nobody, as we know. And then force fumbles, any in the entire game. Chidobi Awuzie with a force fumble and a fumble recovery. No defensive touchdowns. Who fumbled the ball? We're about to find out. Going to be a receiver more than likely. Can we check here? Who fumbled? Hopefully not Saquon. Fumble for Odell. Okay. Now we're going to look at pass rushers. Because it's no secret, and there are some good ones at the top. It's no secret that Olivier Vernon's not going to be around forever. So we have to look into getting better uh, at defensive end. And these 3-4 outside linebackers are just as good as defensive ends. And there are some decent ones. Fortunately, we're out of points. See if we can beat the 4-1 Redskins. This is going to be a tough game. We really need to win. And we don't. We're going to slip to 2-3. and three As we lose by 3 points to the Washington Redskins. That is a tough break. That is a tough break. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just a close game throughout. Alex Smith with an interception. Kyle Laletta, not a great game. Interception for him, too. Saquon Barkley went off. Three rushing touchdowns for him. 
172 yards. As far as receiving yards go, 156 for Jordan Reed with a touchdown as well. Um, of course, Odell had a decent game. No touchdown for him, though. Defensively, B.J. Goodson led her team in tackles with 11. Tackles for loss for Janoris Jenkins, Damon Harrison. Quarterback sack for Jonathan Allen. He had two. B.J. Goodson, Dalvin Tomlinson, both with one. Interceptions for DeMarco Sanders and Nat DeGear out of BYU. We don't call his name very often. Forced fumbles for B.J. Goodson, who also recovered it. And I assume no defensive touchdowns. No defensive touchdowns. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade some players. Morris Dubose with a point as we're going to go into zone. It doesn't fit the scheme fit, but, I mean, we play a lot more zone than we do man. So I'd rather have him be a better zone cover corner. Give me plus two. Plus two zone coverage. That's big. 91 zone. Logan Robeson also with a point. Do we bother going into power here? It fits the scheme, but it doesn't really fit his ability so much. Uh, we need to boost his run blocking. That's first and foremost... So, uh, let's go into power, actually. Might as well boost him up to a 79 overall. Not a huge boost for run blocking there. And then Avery Moss with a pretty insignificant point. Gets him up to a 70, but I don't know. He's not very good. He probably won't be on the team next year. All right. Oh, Darby Robinson looks terrible. And I'm really only looking at, uh, pass rushers here. As I really like the left outside linebackers. Kent Raymond and Lewis Hodge look very, very good. I like them a lot. Um, I don't even mind Bradley Collins that much. Morio Chavu, or Chavis, is not that bad. Let's look at the actual outside, or excuse me, actual defensive ends here. As uh, I don't really like any of them right now. Big game against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. They are 0 5. If we lose this game, it's going to be a lot tougher to make the playoffs. But. We got to win it. We're going to simulate. We need a win here. And we drop to 2-4. and four. The Eagles pick up their first win as we lose again by three points. You have got to be kidding me. Three losses in a row. The last two have been by three points. Like, unbelievable. Carson Wentz with a great performance. Loletta was actually pretty good as well. Uh, Saquon Barkley needs to get the football more. Touchdowns for Carlos Kershaw and Wayne Gallman, the two back of running backs. Odell, great game for him. Defensively, Landon Collins led our game or, or led the game in tackles with eight tackles for loss. Nobody really stands out too much, but two and a half sacks for Fletcher Cox, two for Nigel Bradham. Do we get no pressure in the entire game? An interception for Ronald Darby. We should have won this game, man. If we didn't make these small mistakes, I mean, it would have been easy. We're going to lose by three. That is just the worst. Another point for Alex Espinoza. Might as well go back into run stopper here. Big boost across the board by one. But uh, a lot of categories got touched. Abraham Francisco looks all right in the fourth round. But he's obviously not my first choice. Tyree Morris looks incredible as a 3-4 defensive end. He could even play outside probably if he has decent enough speed. It's an interesting draft class. This is the last week that we can trade anybody. We're in a we're in an interesting spot. Damon Harrison, Olivier Vernon, Janoris Jenkins will all be free agents at the end of this year. And they are not exactly in the best age situation. We have made our first major trade of the franchise, sending Janoris Jenkins. Antoine Todd in a second round pick this year to Los Angeles. Derwin James is the newest member of the New York Giants. Now, I know what you may be thinking. One, huge trade for an impact player. But where does he fit? Where does Derwin James fit in with the defense? We have a free safety. We have a strong safety. We drafted Julius Manning. Granted, it was a later pick. Yeah, opposed to the other top guys. Julius Manning is going to stay the starting free safety. That's just what's going to happen. His zone coverage isn't there, but I like him overall as a player. When I was looking at Derwin James' numbers to potentially bring him in, what I saw was a guy with decent speed, good zone, good man, good hit power. This is, first of all, absolutely our nickel cornerback, as um, he will play that slot cornerback position he could play sub linebacker 
He's got speed. He's got size. He's got the tackling ability. We just picked up an extremely versatile piece to our defense that can really play all over the field in every package. We're going to move Derwin James to cornerback. That's going to be the move for us. So now that Derwin James is, I guess, the number one cornerback on our team, we have a number of options here. We're going to upgrade his zone. That's going to boost him up to a 92 overall. I don't know if I love, and that, that's plus two to zone. That's actually pretty good. I don't know if I love him as a boundary cornerback. Jalen Mills is not particularly good. He is almost more of a safety himself with good man abilities. Uh, this is an interesting spot. Derwin James, of course, will play that slot corner position. That pretty much takes him away from the opportunity to be able to play sub-linebacker, but we weren't really going to play him there anyway. We're also going to go out and sign a backup middle linebacker just because I feel like we need the depth. So we're going to go out. Nate Benson off the Atlanta practice squad is the newest member of the New York Giants. I'm trying to decide where I want these players to play. It's really a tough decision for me. Darwin James isn't a cornerback as much as his uh, numbers insist that he could be. He might start at free safety. I think what, what we'll do is uh, I think I think Derwin James is going to play free safety maybe and slot corner. And then have Julius Manning play cornerback sometimes. I want both these guys to be on the field. It's a tough pickup to grab a third safety, essentially. I don't know. All right, so what we've done is gone into our playbook. And in big nickel over G, we have three safeties on the field, which would put um, Julius Manning over the top, Derwin James at that strong safety spot, and then Landon Collins in the box. I think that's a really good look for us, especially given their abilities. The only thing I might change would be Julius Manning in the box and have Landon Collins over the top. That wouldn't be the worst idea. We're going to try out with the way we have it. I think this is a pretty good look for us, and we're just going to try and fit in Derwin James into as many packages as we can with Julius Manning still being on the field. So this package has Derwin James on the field at two different positions, which we're not going to do that. So he's going to switch there with uh, Julius Manning who is in the box. So in dime, we have the three safeties on the field. Wait, wait, do we have... What? That was such a weird look. I think we had Jalen Mills in at two different spots too. We're going to bring in Nat DeGear instead of having two Jalen Mills. So we got dime worked out. Dollar, three, two, six. Again, we have two different guys in at two different spots. Derwin James and Jalen Mills. We're going to bring in Julius Manning at that spot and then Nat DeGear at that spot in dollar. Julius Manning comes in a nickel double A gap. I like that. He's going to come in a nickel normal as well. All right, so we have a ton of packages that now feature three safeties on the field at once, which I think is going to be a really interesting look. And as much as it pains me to get rid of Janoris Jenkins, we weren't going to re-sign him. He was going to be an impending free agent. We're going to stick with OV. We're going to stick with Damon Harrison, as I think those are very vital players to our success. But bringing in Derwin James, I think, is going to be a game changer. We need a win here. Got the Ravens at MetLife. We're going to come out in some alternates, finally. We have a huge um, advantage in terms of overall. Hopefully, we can actually get the job done. We're going to run the red jerseys. And I prefer white pants, if I'm being honest. All right, so this is the look. Red jerseys, what are the Ravens coming out in? Hopefully, white. White, all right, let's do it. Giants, Ravens, coming out in the alternate jerseys. Of course, the only team to ever beat the Giants in the Super Bowl. A little unfortunate, but we got an awesome night game matchup for you guys, as a lot of people in the stadium are coming out here in red. And this is our first time wearing these red jerseys in the entire franchise. And this is the first time the Giants have worn them in white sometime I don't know that I've seen the Giants wear these in the past like 10 years it feels like pretty amazing but all right let's go ahead get her done Derwin James getting his first action for us 
I wonder how uh, our rookie Julius Manning feels about being benched. Big tackle from Dalvin Tomlinson to start this thing off. That's a user pick. Easy reads. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, and Alex Espinoza is into the end zone for the touchdown. The pick six from the rookie who continues to have just an unbelievable season. That would be maybe his sixth interception, sixth, seventh interception on the year, something ridiculous. That's got to be a play. Landon Collins comes over and makes it happen. Love to see it. Third and ten. We're in man. Somebody's got to make a play. Covering Espinosa out wide. And Lamar Jackson going to just throw that one away, it looks like. Off to a pretty rocky start for him. First and ten. Oh, Saquon Barkley's wide open in the flat. How can you not? They're blitzing. All right, somebody pick up those blocks. Wide open over the middle. It's the tight end, Damar Jacobs. Finding the open spot in the defense, sitting down, getting that 20 yard, or 29 yard pickup, rather. There's Saquon Barkley. That should be a touchdown. Go through him. He does. Saquon Barkley just powers his way into the end zone. Got a couple of good blocks. And we got a 14 0 lead working here in MetLife Stadium. Give me the ball. Easy reads. User pick. Alex Espinoza again. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And we are the red fish here today. Eight picks for the rookie Espinoza. <laughs> We're going to try that. Sterling Shepard makes the catch. Give me forward progress on the one they do. All right. That's a good ball from Laletta. That was a tight window. We're going to go one-on-one -on -one here. We got Odell. One-on-one -on -one coverage. He makes the play. You cannot have him in one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's a mismatch. We're gonna go up 21-0 here as Odell is killing it in one-on-ones over the course of this season as long as it's not on a slant because he'll drop it every time. Someone get after the quarterback. There it is, OV. His first sack on the game. Lamar Jackson has nowhere to go. Swarmed by a number of different giant defenders. The Ravens can't get anything going again. Sam Cook's going to punt. Morris Dubose is now back returning. We've seen him return a kick recently. How about a punt? That 99 speed is pretty good. He's going to spin back and set us up with excellent positioning. Let's go inside lead. Odell Beckham Jr. holds on to the ball. Pretty nice game there. Kyle Lilletta 6 for 9 today. Nice. Oh, we got Howard Russell. We also got the wheel route. I like this matchup better. Evan Ingram! Can't hold on. Uh, ball's maybe a little bit underthrown. We had Matthew Judon in coverage. I mean, I'm going to throw that all day. It's a primary rush linebacker in coverage against Evan Ingram. I don't know how that's not a touchdown. We're going to go one-on-one -on -one again. It's Odell Beckham Jr. What are you doing in one-on-one -on -one coverage? Odell's going to get it going all day. His second receiving touchdown of the game and of the quarter. Third and three. Let's shut it down. It's a run. Deontay Foreman, nowhere to go. It's B.J. Goodson on the tackle. Looks like Baltimore will punt again. Get to him. Get to him. Get to him. Olivier Vernon. His second sack of the game. Big props to Roman Pugh on that one for giving O.V. the opportunity. It's going to be third and 23. We're going to come out in our new favorite formation. Big nickel over G. And maybe send a little bit of heat. We're likely going to run the ball here on third and 26 after the false start. And there is the run up the middle. Good tackle from Jalen Mills. And Baltimore again will punt. There's a rollout. Oh, we got him deep. It's underthrown and it's intercepted. Jimmy Ward. Ah, uh, we had Odell on that too. That's so annoying. Big hit. Julius Manning in the backfield. Alex Collins can't run anywhere against this front. And we do have one of the best front sevens in the NFL. Look at B.J. Goodson, Alex Espinoza. Landon Collins been playing in the box, but Roman Pugh, Dalvin Tomlinson. We're going to get after the quarterback there. Espinoza can't sack him. Damon Harrison knocks it away. That should be a sack. How do we not wrap up there? 
Someone get after Lamar Jackson. He's going one on one deep. And that is incomplete off the hands of Amari Cooper. Jalen Mills was all right in coverage, I guess. We're going to roll out with Kyle. We got Odell. Let's go. Odell Beckham Jr. down the sideline. Rolls into the catch. First down. A huge play action here. Depends on if they bite on it. Doesn't really look like they did. But we have Sterling Shepard downfield. Laletta delivers a dime to Sterling Shepard. Touchdown. 52 yards. As he's really been our big play machine over the course of this franchise as we go up 35-0 in the biggest slaughter of this season. Obviously, we struggled in the record department. We are 2-4. and four. This hopefully should be our third win. Looks like it's going to be. Our defense is not allowing an inch. That's a screen. Get over there, Espinoza. That's a good play by Roman Pugh. Espinoza couldn't lock up. Oh, he's taking a deep shot. That's a Derwin James, who in his debut gets the interception. Lamar Jackson took a one-on-one -on -one shot for Michael Crabtree. Don't try Derwin James with a sorry-ass receiver like Crabtree. As a result, you go get. Shout out to Richard Sherman. We're going deep. I think we got him burned. That's going to be an interception, actually. Marlon Humphrey, as we turn the ball right back over, looking for Saquon. Marlon Humphrey. Foolish decision. To screen. We're all over it. Alex Collins breaks the tackle, though. That's lobbing over the top. And a big hit from Landon Collins. That's over the top. Beautiful pass from Loletta. And we have Odell Beckham Jr. For a huge gain. Now we have the opportunity to score before half on that monster shot. And we have Odell here. Inside lead. It's picked off again. By Marlon Humphrey. They're calling for a safety there. We... That's not a safety. Is it? Wow, that's a safety. We're going to get two points in the ball with not enough time to make anything happen. But what a weird, what a weird thing that's happened. There we go, Saquon. Take the easy first down there. Saquon's rolling. It's easy to just can him off the ball and find the hole. Hit it. He's got the speed. He's got the elusiveness. We're going to roll out, throw it back. Howard Russell. Let's go. Inside the five. Send the ball back to Barkley. That is going to be a touchdown. Pretty easy. The Ravens here are, are bad, and they're playing badly. This is just not even fair right now. They have 44 total yards of offense. Granted, their offense is bad, being led by a young not great overall quarterback but it's not even close Morris DuBose oh he almost jumped that that would have been a pick six for DuBose that's a user pick easy reads getting used to saying that by now Alex Espinosa was his, with his third pick of the game and this is I, I don't even like it at this point easy reads uh, the very hungry caterpillar but like Granted, even without the picks, we'd still be destroying them. We'd still be up by a lot, but like, I don't know. I feel like the user picks, I like getting them, obviously, but it's not fun to blow out the CPU so badly, and it's, I don't know. I like getting the user picks, but it's just, I think, I, I don't know what the solution is, honestly. I think the solution is just user the middle linebacker less frequently. I think that's the easy solution. I'm going to start doing that, and we'll see how the rest of these games play. And this, this, you know, we'd still be crushing them. We're just way better. They can't get anything moving offensively. It's not just because of the user picks. Their defense can't stop us for the most part. We've turned over the ball three times. Why would the CPU have us go for it here? We're up 44-3. to three. The field positioning is good, but I don't know. This feels like a little much... <laughs> That's a pick, C.J. Mosley. I, 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 uh, I don't even know what to say. I thought that uh, Howard Russell was running a different route. And I didn't really like the way the look of that. So we had the same number of turnovers. It's just the Baltimore offense can't do anything to score. That's why it's a shutout. Or not a shutout. It's domination. That's a pick. Espinosa does it by himself. Not even an easy read. 
Just Alex Espinosa being a monster. His fourth pick of the game. That's just that's just too many. I know, but Lamar Jackson threw it right to him. What are you doing? There's Saquon. That's got to be a touchdown. He gets a stiff arm. He just doesn't, doesn't even have the breakaway speed. It's been a while since we've seen a Saquon huge touchdown. Saquon rolls over a Baltimore Raven. Poor guy. That's Jimmy Ward. His third rushing touchdown of the game. We've dropped a 50 bomb on him. Oh, and down goes Lamar Jackson again. Rolls right into Olivier Vernon who was waiting for him. Three sacks this game. That's only his fifth on the season, though, in, uh, in seven games. This is his seventh game. But uh, huge production today. Going to get those numbers up. Third and 16 now for the Ravens. And that is knocked away. Beautifully done by B.J. Goodson. These are these blowout games that you guys love, but I, I, we've never even come close to beating a team by this much. And we used her last week against the Redskins and had a super close matchup. This is just embarrassing from the Baltimore Ravens who oof, have really struggled to run the ball, have struggled to pass the ball. But I am going to use her less frequently, uh, frequently coming up here for the rest of the season. Just like in close games and stuff and when we don't have an overwhelming number of interceptions, this is going to be a shot taken deep. And it's Derwin James' second interception of the game in his debut. Lamar Jackson, you got to... Be a little bit more careful with the football. That's double coverage, my guy. That's got to be a sack. Roman Pugh brings down Lamar Jackson, who keeps rolling out of the pocket into these defensive ends. What are you doing? All right, so that was a slaughter. Sorry, I know that game probably wasn't the most interesting. Lawrence Thomas with a skill point. As uh, I think we're going to go in a power rusher more and just focus on what he does really, really well and get his power move up even higher. Block shit goes up too anyway. Lawrence Thomas is looking like a really, really talented defensive lineman. Nat DeGear, uh, we'll probably go to man here. His zone's very good already. So we'll make him a more balanced cornerback. Getting man coverage up by two. All right. So, yeah, Slaughter, I know this wasn't probably an exciting episode to watch. I'm sorry about that. But, I mean, it's the they were the one in five Ravens. They weren't particularly good, and we really, really gave it to them. That was, uh, that was not even that fun to play, if I'm being honest. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And we will end the episode here with a boost to run stopper for Alex Espinoza. Getting him up to an 87 overall. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.